to understand the hypertime shadow, you have to you have to understand that the space, this surrounding space around the Earth, is used by the mechanism that creates it in the moment. The energy that we see emanating from the sun is a sort of, of shadow or a sort of uh, symptom of this other movement underneath as our energy is, is moving through time, as our energy and matter move through time. The sun grazing comet comes into this field. When it, when it crosses the space, When the sun grazing comet crosses the space where the Earth and the sun are interacting electromagnetically, it disturbs the Earth's translation through time. In other words, what we perceive when we look at the sun is dependent on the space between the Earth and the sun in the moment. So there's a point here on the sun where this, this particular electromagnetic wave uh, is, enters and exits the, what I call the primary time axis. So there's, there's a, 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 a movement that is going back and forth like this. It, it's, a, it's an underlying carrier wave, and it moves back and forth very quickly at an incredible speed. Every photon that we perceive is the movement of this wave. In other words, when we see, when we perceive a photon, when we perceive that that particle, that is the that is the, um, you know, the, the symptom of the particle wave duality. When you've got this 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 duality with particles and waves. When we perceive this photon, that is the click of this particular wave underneath. And so the, this waveform is moving at a harmonic of this time space. And so there's a there's a there's a hyper time wavelength. There's a there's a wavelength that is the hyper time. In other words, it's it's the time uh, underneath of what we measure to be time in the energy analysis. And the problem with the problem with quantum mechanics and the problem with the the um, the um, analysis of the uh, energy and mass relationship is that time is considered to be this singular thing. We have one variable for time, and that's T. Time is more than one thing. There's something underneath of time, and that is what I call hypertime. And it's this other wavelength that moves to create the appearance of the photon that is disrupted by the incoming sun grazing comet. What would be normally a, a wave that travels this far, you know, this wave would normally have to travel this far in order to this this would continue this way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and trace the, the we'll give an example a single wave example. I'll trace this wave. So this is one, this is like a one carrier wave for a single photon. It interacts at some point between the Earth and the Sun. It, it crosses. It interferes at this point. Um, and then the, the, we're going to consider we're going to consider it before and after the, the Sun grazing comet. So, considering it before, it travels this distance back and forth, undulating back and forth to move the photon that, the photons that we see that are coming from that point on the sun. In other words, the, 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 they're taking this path through time space. And while it takes, in, in theory, a certain amount of T time, I don't know if, I think it's a number of minutes. Um, I think, I don't want to get it wrong. But it's a number of minutes that it supposedly takes the photon to travel from the Earth to the sun. Well, the hypertime, is a single wavelength of the photon. And so the hypertime wavelength is the, the amount of time it takes. The hypertime is, is a single photon wavelength. And so there's another wave that's moving from where the, the, the point that we conceive to be the sun to the Earth 
in a single photon wavelength. And so there, there are different frequencies of the hypertime wavelengths as well. And the, when, when this sun grazing comet crosses this, um, this wave, it creates a feedback in it. It creates a feedback in the common carrier. Because what happens is the this wavelength no longer makes it all the way to the sun. And so it goes back and forth between here and here very quickly. So the frequency of the hypertime wave increases. The hypertime wave incre the frequency of the hypertime wave increases and we uh, we see an active region on the sun. Let's say it's up here. Is it more likely it would be uh, somewhere up here. So we would see, we see this active region on the sun because what it, what is all of the matter on the earth in a particular time space aspect that is multidimensional is being disrupted. There's a feedback in the common carrier from this object. And if you sort it out, it has it has to do with the relationship it it, it has it how all the information about the actual geometry of time and space is encoded in this relationship with its velocity. It changes with its velocity, it changes with its size, and it changes with its trajectory. Now, uh, another question was, why does the, I think I've answered this question, but why does the incoming comet leave an active region or a, a sunspot if, even if it doesn't hit the sun? This is the reason. This is how this is why it happens, and the if you look at the the the, the velocity of this object, if and the, the strangest part about it, I mean it it, it really is really telling about the nature of space time. I mean it uh, it might make a, a hardcore scientist get religion. <laughs> I mean it's so far away from what we what we think normally what you would normally think about the concept of what what the sun is is something completely different than what we thought it was. It looks like it represents a sort of year. Uh, well, the way I see it is that the, the orbit around the sun uh, is a year of time-space. And every trajectory, every if you think about all the rays that would actually come out of the sun and pass the Earth, that ray itself represents a particular time-space coordinate and so the reason that, that, the, that the, uh, the path of the incoming sun grazing comet tracks the spot around the sun is because the ray of the sun itself, the sun, the, the sun is being created by the same common carrier as the Earth. And so there's, if you want to, uh, do you re do recursion on this, do recursion, you recursively pull out and say, oh, well, the, the sun is, is uh, a part of this other ray that's coming from someplace else. And I don't know where that is. I haven't figured that out yet. wouldn't be surprised if it's the center of the, the galaxy or the center of the universe, the, the point of the original Big Bang, maybe. Um, like I said, the, the calculations in astronomy, the things that we've already, that we've already uh, discovered about, um, about the nature of time and space, are are no less important now. Don't don't make the mistake of of abandoning all other analysis for this. This is not the this is not the end all be all. That's one of my biggest concerns about astrotometry is that people are going to disregard the other science now. That's not what this is about. That's not what this is. That's not my intention. And please don't make it into a religion. I mean, I think I think Sir Isaac Newton would be rolling in his grave if he if he realized uh, what what happened to his. Uh, to his to his work, I think it, I think the um, I think the same thing is is true of a lot of a lot of people that have founded the the quantum mechanical uh, schools and stuff like that. Um, but this is this is so so key, and it, it really really I mean if you if you're able to understand that this is a hyperdimensional ray, that when when you when you see something that's coming in uh, to towards the sun at a particular velocity. The reason that it leaves the mark on the sun is because of our translation through time. And this is a node. This is a one-year time-space node. 
And there are other nodes that represent other times, and I haven't sorted them out yet. And so there's a lot of work to be done here. And, you know, I'm, I, I'm very much interested in collaborating with people who are interested in sorting this out, but it has to be done scientifically. I'm a real stickler for rigor. And while a lot of my ideas are wrong, um, part of the reason that I haven't tried to share them in a public way is because I see flaws in them. The, the, the math, I've got math on astrotometry. If anybody tries to drop docs on me, be very careful about that. Um, the <laughs> I'm not a simple guy. And so um, the math, I have math on astrotometry, it's all wrong. It's all wrong because of this. It's all wrong because of what we think about the nature of time and space. It has to be reconsidered. We have to imagine a better way to understand it.